want to preface this seminar with please leave your thin skins outside because we're going to offend you. We're going to offend some of you. That's our intent. Okay? Not on purpose, but to make a point. And so the things that you're going to see on this PowerPoint slide is to try to get you, the chaplains, to understand what the DAV requires. When we go through this particular PowerPoint slide, I want you to know that when you are a chaplain in the DAV and you are officiating as a chaplain in the DAV, it's not that you have to deny your faith to be a chaplain in the DAV. If you are a minister, a pastor, a chaplain outside, in, outside of this realm, and you have a faith preference, you practice your faith. I practice my faith 24-7. I cannot deny who I believe in and what I believe in. I practice it. But what you as chaplains have to do at the chapter and department level is you've got another dynamic you need to add to your repertoire, and that is the Constitution and bylaws of the DAV. And what they say that we must do so, when we begin this, I want you to understand that we're purposely trying to get you to think outside the box because what I see as I travel across the nation to various departments is that we've made memorial services like worship services and that's not what we need to be doing. I know in a couple of departments we have Muslim veterans and they don't come to the service because we treat it like a worship service based on whatever faith you believe in. And again, remember what I said here, you don't deny your faith, you practice your faith, but we must add another dynamic okay, to this. We have to stay within the confines of the Constitution of Bibles, and here's the reason why. You are the members, I am the member, and we all voted at one time that to become non-sectarian. Now, I have the old documents of the DAV where there was a heavy emphasis on God. I've got a chaplain handbook from the DAV, I've got prayers from the DAV, and I never hand them out, even though I have copies of all this. And the reason being is because of that statement in the Constitution of Bibles for non-secretarian. Now there is nothing that says when you're outside of your official capacity that you can't discuss your face out in the hallway. Go for it. What I want you to kind of get in the mode for is be receptive to others' faith. You can disagree. And I have an article that's coming out that's already out on the website, and you will probably get this magazine sometime this month. It's called True Tolerance. And there's a there's a, a form out there in our society where uh, we're not very tolerant. If you've been watching the news for any length of time, we got both sides, right and left and in the middle. We just don't want to be tolerant of anything. The chaplains, we're the bridge makers. We're the peacekeepers. And you do that from your faith perspective. Now, saying that, there's another concern I have. And the concern is, the Constitution by law says that you can be elected or appointed. In other words, the members can elect you or appoint you. You don't have to have a spiritual bone in your body. Now, here's the danger of that. Not saying you need to be spiritual, but here's the danger. If you haven't had proper training, and I'm, and I'm not going to certify you only because I get two hours of your time once a year. There is no way. And I will tell you what I think I said last year or the year before last, that you can go on the internet and find legit programs where you can do a certification process. And if that's your calling, go. I could have been a pastor of a church ten times over. I chose not to be. Why? Because the chaplain gives me the freedom to travel wherever I need to go. And I prefer to do that than stay grounded in a community at a building to edify, build up. There are missions. Everyone here has a different mission. So when we begin the PowerPoint slide, I'm going to throw some stuff at you. No, my guest speaker's going to throw some stuff at you. That's why I throw the blame on him. Woo, <laughs> I can sit down and enjoy. After this, I think the presentation is about 10 to 15 minutes, right? When it's done, we're going to have a question and answer session. And please, don't be afraid. You can, you can ask the question up here and come up to the mic. Uh, I'm going to be where I'm at right now. Don't be afraid to ask questions so that you can get the answers before you leave, okay? We may not take the full two hours today, and that's okay. What's important is you take away the knowledge and the wisdom we're trying to impart to you to be better chaplains, okay? 
So, without further ado, let me introduce our guest. Once in a while, I travel across the United States and I get uh, privy to attend a memorial service at a department. And then when I like what I really see, and the department chaplain can say something better than I can present it, then I ask him, hey, can you come up here and present this material? And I'll let you direct, instruct, teach, impart, and then I'll be here to, uh, you know, bounce off of anything, anything that's going on here. So that you know, but before I do that, how many of you know who I am besides the National Chaplain? Do you know my background? All right, okay. Some of you know my background. All right, I have 30, over 30 plus years of ministry. I'm an ordained minister, and I'm certified chaplain of the International Federation of Christian Chaplains. So I do chaplain work outside of this realm. I do prison ministry. I do street ministry. I do food bank ministry. Those are things that my faith teaches. I have found that the world out there doesn't like to be preached to. So I preach by the way I live. Mm -hmm. Now, from my faith perspective, if I extend love, that's going to be reciprocated. And I found that works very well than saying, well, I don't believe what you believe. I'm going to build a wall and, you know, get out of here. We are, if we're not a secretary and organization, we are all encompassing the wall faith. And I found if you allow someone to express their faith, they allow you to express yours. By <laughs> kindness, love, caring. And that's what my chaplains need to be, is loving, kind, caring. You have to care. If you've been elected or appointed, and you're just in there for the position, please do me a favor. Resign. Because you're not the right person for that position. Okay? So the bottom line is, I've got a lot of stuff going on. All right, I've got a degree from Liberty, a degree from the seminary, and you know, that's all good and fine, but you don't have to have such things to be a good chaplain. All I ask you to do is care. And if you can care about your members, and you can go out and visit those veterans that won't come to your chapter, then go and visit. Go to the hospital. Go do what you need to do. All right? If you don't understand what the, the description of a chaplain is, you, I don't know if we put my information in this. Uh, but okay. Well, I'll put out my phone. I'll put out my phone. Number. You guys can write it in. Text me, which is the best way to do it. The millennials have trained me well. I'm a trained monkey now. <laughs> when I call my daughter, 36 years of age, or my son at 31 years of age, and I call, they never answer the phone. I'll leave a message. But by golly, if I text them, they respond in 30 seconds. So if you text me, hey, we good. And then now I've got living proof and in front of my face that, hey, someone has got to hold me and I'll get back to you within a reasonable amount of time. And what does that mean? Well, at least within 24 hours. I'm not going to leave you out there hanging, okay, unless it's an emergency. Now, let me introduce our guest. Charles Fuller is the Department of Virginia chaplain. And he's put together a very powerful and very informative PowerPoint slide that I want you guys to enjoy. And after that, we'll have a discussion about it. It's going to be open forum. We're chaplains, guys. So there's nothing formal here. If you want to go back there and get a drink of water, take it back to your seat, do so. If you need to go out and go to the little, we're disabled American veterans. And I don't know about you, my bladder isn't as strong as it used to be. So if you guys need to go and take medication, whatever you do, and then come back and do so. We're informal here. This is an informal seminar. Unlike uh, the structured seminars or other things, I want you to go ahead, guys. What I want you to be is alert and attentive to the information. That's what I want you to be. Okay? And if you feel that you're going to be offended or you are offended by some of the things that we're about to throw at you, I apologize in advance. But I don't apologize for the material and trying to get you to think outside the box. Because I mean, it's not my intent to offend you to the point where you've got issues with me. My intent is just to wake you up, clear your mind of the old traditional worship services that you're doing, and let's focus on memorial services and what the Constitution of Bible says. So now let me go back to my guest. I'll get to you sooner or later. All right. <laughs> All right. So, Chaplain Charles Fuller uh, has been uh, seminary trained at Liberty University as well. And uh, I was just very impressed with the PowerPoint slide. So I'm going to let him do most of the speaking. And I'm going to sit up here and enjoy the PowerPoint slideshow. All I ask is that while we're going through this, when you get offended, 
Uh, please leave. Look, here's what we need to do: leave all your baseball bats outside the door. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Because uh, I don't want to be hit in the back of the head when you get to that point. But the bottom line is, is that he is. This is a very good, informative uh, seminar, and I want you guys to take away what you need to take away to be an excellent, excellent chaplain. And every one of us can be. You don't have to be officially trained. You just have to care. So without further ado, Chaplain Charles Fuller, I turn this show over to you, and I'm going to take a seat over here, and when they start throwing eggs, I'm just going to get up underneath the seat here. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate it. As he mentioned, I'm, I'm Chaplain Charles Fuller from uh, Virginia. Um, a little bit about you, uh, a little bit about me. I um, I was an atheist when I used to wear the uniform. I um, I had been dragged to church as a child, but I was pretty sure that he didn't exist, and uh, never never came to know anything about anything. I knew enough about um, a holy book to be dangerous, and that was about it. <laughs> Um, and, and you don't have to be a seminarian to be a chaplain. You just have to love on people and, and be willing to accept them where they are and help them to, um, to come to something better. I say that to say this. Sometimes, um, well, there's no really good way to say it. Sometimes our brothers and sisters uh, of, of certain faith um, we have a way of doing things sometimes that is off-putting. And I do too. I'm, I'm obnoxious sometimes. I try not to be. But um, we've all worn the uniform in here or been family members of people who've worn the uniform, so salty language won't, won't bother you too much, I hope. So without, without anything more, um, let's just get right to it. All right, just in case you didn't know, you're in the chaplain seminar. <laughs> All right, and we're in Reno at the National Convention. Very important to me and to you, I'm sure, is the mission statement. Our mission statement, we're dedicated to a single purpose, empowering veterans to lead high-quality lives with respect and dignity. Now, I don't mind telling you, he's already told you, I'm seminary trained at Liberty, and so you can guess that I am what some people would call a Christian, uh, some people don't call themselves Christian because it was, in, in fact, originally a term of derision used in Antioch. But whatever your faith is, I'm okay with it. You can be faithless. Of course, if you're in here, that would be a little weird. But I'm not, I'm not the kind of guy that you, know, you see in the, in the Walmart, Hey, brother, how are you doing? Oh, I'm blessed by the best and praying for the rest. How are you? Praise Jesus. No. But I'm not quiet about my faith either. And I don't expect you to be. But there is a point here, respect and dignity. And that happens in the meetings, in your conferences, in your conventions. You can treat people disrespectfully without even knowing that you're doing it. Let me illustrate. My, uh, my, my beautiful bride is holding my phone, but it has a compass on it. Technology is something else. But if I were to say, hey, okay, I want everyone to get up and pray, and I've already checked, Mecca is that way. <laughs> and then I'm going to read to you a passage from the Quran. How would you feel about that? Would that be okay? Everybody has to, everybody has to get on the floor and, and be prostrate. And I mean, let's face it, some of us being getting prostrate is not easy. No, I didn't say prostate. That's a, that's a whole other thing. But but the idea is that I would no sooner stand up and pray in the name of Allah than I would in the name of Jesus Christ while I'm behind the, the sacred desk, if you will, at a conference or convention. That's why Mike doesn't, doesn't you know, owe uh, eternal God our Heavenly Father. In fact, usually, he takes the um, eternal creator. I like that. I like that. Although I, I 
I typically tell my chaplains in Virginia that you want to, you know, I just I use what's in the ritual, but I take out the these, thous, and whithersoeverists, and so on. Um, but anyway, so with that, just keep that in mind. That just as offensive as it would be for me to stand up here and quote the Quran that says, Say not the Trinity, it is not meet that Allah should have a son. The Muslim is equally as offended when we want to quote John 3.16. So let's talk about the F-bomb. Everybody know what the F-bomb is? Oh, yeah. Now by the way, my chaplains in Virginia have seen this already. If, if you Don't feel bad if you want to fall asleep. Just don't nod. That's distracting. I've been slept on by some of the best. Uh, I, I planted a little church in Portsmouth, Virginia, and uh, we grew pretty well. We were hosted by another church, and um, they got upset because, well, as one dear old woman, I don't know how to say lady, said, I think you've reached enough black people. I wanted to tell her, I think you might be going to hell. But, you know, <laughs> but, you know the, 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 I say that to say this. I am not shy at all about my faith. When we're in the hallway, you want prayer, I will pray for you. And yes, I do pray in the name of Jesus. I will pray for a, a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit if that's what you need. But when I'm up here, I have to remember that not everybody under the sound of my voice even believes in God, much less believes in the same God I do. The F-bomb. No, it's not what you thought it was. It's faith. What two things in our society, and I, I like audience participation, shout out, it's okay. What two things in polite society do we not discuss? Religion and politics. Religion and politics. Baseball teams? Uh, are you a Red Sox fan? Oh, okay. Well, well, yeah, usually some restraint is, is a good idea. But with that, we have to recognize that, you know, it can be very, uh, it can be very divisive when we start talking about faith. Just as it is, when we start talking about politics. Last night I overheard someone running down our current president like he was a dog. Now I don't care whether you voted for the man or not. I don't, because we're nonpartisan. But, okay, do your thing. I heard the same thing when President Obama was president. Oh, we need to impeach his behind. And on and on and on, and people ran him down. And it happens all the time. It got to the point before the election that we had to say in our chapter, look, no discussion of politics, period. Leave it outside the door. You want to talk about politics, do it on your time outside the door because we got people with PTSD in here. You want somebody to snap. No, I'm just kidding. So what is the official belief system of the DAV and where is that written? I'm a rules guy. I like rules. I, I hear people say, oh, well, this is what we do, blah, blah, blah. Where's that written? I want to know. Where is it written? I told you I was a skeptic. Do we really have to encourage the faithless? I mean, come on, really? All right, so this guy's mother died, and he believes that she's gone to be worm food, and that's the end. Is there anything we can give them? And how do you deal with people that don't believe as you do? Sometimes that's a sticky wicket. Well, let me tell you about the official faith of the DAB. <clears throat> We're non-sectarian. Now, what does sectarian mean? Very simple. From Merriam-Webster's Dictionary of Relating to or Characteristic of a Sect or Sectarian, Limited in Scope, in Character or Scope, or Parochial. That doesn't really clear the water up too much. But I like the, I like the definition of non-sectarian. It kind of gives us what we're supposed to be. Not having a sectarian character. This one, not affiliated with or restricted to a particular religious group. And why? Because our bylaws demand it. Now last year, I learned something at the chaplain seminar. This is, by the way, our, the cover of our, uh, our current 
Constitution and Bylaws. Does anybody know what the next Constitution and Bylaws of the color is going to be? Most likely? Huh? Green. Green? Probably green and gray? Because the Eagles won the Super Bowl. Yeah! So anyway, and no, I'm not an Eagles fan. Get over yourselves. You can leave now. We're not sectarian because our bylaws, our bylaws uh, demand it. And where is that? It's in Article 2, Section 2.1, Nonpartisanship. The organization shall be non-political and non-sectarian, and the name of this organization or name of any subdivision thereof shall not be used in representing the desires or wishes of its membership in any political, sectarian, or labor dispute. So in other words, I can't tell you, as a DAV member, I don't like having uh, things on Sunday because that's a day of rest or day of worship or what have you. Or if you're Jewish, I don't want to, I don't think we should have, as a DAV member, I object to uh, having anything on Saturday. That's a Sabbath. Okay. That sounds good, but it's wrong. You can say as a, as a Christian or as a Jew, I don't think that this is right. And you can say that, that's fine, but not when you're in front of people. When you are in front of people, you are chaplain to everyone. You are chaplain to the non-believer. You're, you're chaplain to those who don't know. I like, I like agnostic. The word agnostic really means, I don't know, without knowledge. So, okay. So you're, you, you are, in fact, the chaplain to the clueless, as well as to the deluded. As well, no, no. <laughs> and do you really have to encourage the faithless? Well, here's, here's the thing. I don't believe that anybody, I'm just going to sit through these. I don't believe that anybody is truly faithless. Let's face it, you came in here, you sat down, you had faith that the chair that you're sitting in was going to hold you up. You had faith that the chandelier that's over your head is not going to come down on you. Well, I'm hoping so. <laughs> we need to talk. <laughs> so how do you deal how do you deal with people who don't believe as you do? Let me give you a couple bad examples. Not like this. Your sad devotion to that ancient religion has not helped you conjure up the stolen data tapes, or given you clairvoyance enough to find the rebels' hidden fort. <laughs> I find your lack of faith disturbing. <laughs> Haven't you ever met somebody that is just obnoxious, you know, trying to tear down your faith and? You just wish that you had, maybe it's me, maybe I need to go get a pill or something, but you wish you could just force choke them from across the room, you know, it's like, I don't want to kill you, I just want to shut your mouth for a minute. No, no, we can't do that. And don't do this either. Oh, you don't believe? Inconceivable. 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 I had to throw that in because I just I love the Prince of Pride. <laughs> but it, it, you don't want to say that. Oh, you don't believe this? That's inconceivable. Oh, you believe that? You must be nuts. So then how do you deal with people who don't believe as you do? As comrades. It's simple. I was discussing with, with my friend from Minnesota that, you know, we we sometimes pick on Uncle Sam's misguided children and the squids and uh, the ground pounders and let's see who do I leave out the wing wipers and uh, the puddle pirates. You know we, we do that. What are you a combat cook? Well, actually, here's, here's the thing. I love I love the Navy. I mean I love the, I love the Army. They they do their thing. I love the Marines. I love the Coast Guard. You know, and I love the Air Force, especially because my wife was in the Air Force, and I can't say too much bad about it. But the one branch that keeps everyone else afloat is the Navy. <laughs> We're a diverse. Apologize for that remark. He's delusional. Yeah. And that's because that's because we just we used to give him a ride. That's all. My 
No, we're not going to use that one. Um, <laughs> DAV is a diverse group of men and women who share similar experiences. One of the things that I think is great about DAV is that it is a safe place to be yourself. I mean, let's face it, have you ever looked at somebody that's a civilian and tried to explain to them what it was like to be on general quarters or what it was like to be you know, at this battle station or in this combat or what have you, and they look at you with the deer in the headlights look like, okay, gosh, that must be terrible, but I have no frame of reference to understand that. But whether you were in the Corps or you were in the Air Force or in the Navy, um, we, we all, well, anyway, let's not go there because I know the joke about the men's department. So, um, but the thing is, we all have some common experiences. We know what it is sometimes to have to salute a uniform because we don't respect the person wearing it. They were, maybe they're not worthy of our respect. We know what it is to have long hours and tense situations. And we can relate to one another on that. DAV is and should be a safe place to be yourself. So if somebody comes in and they want to tell me that they believe that the universe is going to bless them with whatever they want, as long as they think positive thoughts, I can't look at them and tell them that I think they're cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. That's not the way to deal with it. Instead, I try to listen and understand what they're saying. Because eventually, it will come, there will be a time when they will want to know what I believe. And I'm going to tell you what, I love to share what I think of as the good news. My commander's back there going, oh yes he does, yes he does. <laughs> We're not a church, we're not a congregation, a mosque, a temple, or even a coven. It used to be that in the Department of Virginia, our, our uh, memorial services were on Sundays. Just that's how it was. Memorial service here was on Sunday. Frankly, I object to that practice for the main reason that usually on Sunday, being the last day of a conference, people, not here, but our conferences, people are thinking of one thing, and that's getting home. They're not thinking about coming to a memorial service unless they're looking for a worship service. Me, I say get in your car, go find a good church on Sunday if that's your thing, you know. But we don't need to. We don't need to make it more. We don't need to. We don't need to church it up. So here's a little video about that you've seen already. What does the AV mean to you? DAV for me means family. Do you know what their awesome organization is? DAV means uh, camaraderie. In one word, DAV means service. The DAV means inspiration to me. DAV to me means the insurance of all future veterans' lives. To me, DAV means commitment. Commitment to other veterans and helping them through the transition out of service. DAV means to me integrity. To me, DAV means brotherhood. I found that brotherhood after I left service. DAV is, it means a sense of normalcy again. I joined the DAV to be able to have a voice for the veterans, so we weren't just left to the wayside. DAV to be me, I. If you go and visit chapters in your department, you will see they do all kinds of different things. And so, I also like music. Yeah, 
Now, when I, when I did it on my computer, it wasn't all spaced out wonky like that, but that's okay. But no, the point of that is this. Um, in fact, that's a, that is a quote from Malcolm X, but it's, it's cut a little bit. Um, in, in talking, he said, we want to have just an off-the-cuff chat between you and me, us. We want to talk right down to earth in a language that everyone here can easily understand. I, I shared with you that when I, when I became... Uh, well, actually, the, the way things used to be in Virginia was we would have really a worship service. We, no kidding, we had songbooks. The uh, first time, uh, as I was sharing with you, Mike, the first time that I led a memorial service at, um, at, in Virginia, it was a fall conference, right after Dave Riley had been elected as national commander, and he was there. And I was nervous. And this wonderful old her, this wonderful lady comes up and says, Chaplain, where are the songbooks? I said, they're in the box over there. She said, oh, do you want me to pass them out? I said, no, ma'am. She said, oh, the other chaplains, they're going to pass them out? I said, no, ma'am. She said, well, if they're not going to pass them out and you don't want me to pass them out, how are we going to sing? I said, we're not. Well, uh, and by this time, my patience had run a little short, but I just tried to keep it nice and calm. I said, ma'am, please hear me. This is not a worship service. This is a memorial service. We are here to remember those who have gone on to their eternal reward, whether they are comrades in arms or whether they are family members of comrades in arms. We're here to remember them. Well, it's, it's been like a church service. I said, yes, it has, and that's why a lot of people don't attend anymore. Frankly, a lot of folks don't want to hear what you believe. They don't care what you believe until they can believe that you care. And at that point, when you've established that relationship with people, they'll hear you. You may have some people who you may wind up proselytizing. I've had some that I've had, that I've had some people ask me if I would baptize them. I've had some ask if I would marry them. I, I, I did um, one one beautiful couple. Another couple. Well, <laughs> let's move on. <clears throat> Chapter ceremonies. Most of us probably have an altar, or what we call an altar. <coughs> probably have a Bible that we open up on the on the um, altar, and that's fine. That's fine. And we always open, I mean, you know, uh, our, our thing is um, our commander usually asks our senior vice commander, what is the normal procedure in opening a meeting of Craddock chapter 41? And, um, and the answer is, it is fitting and proper that we first have prayer and then render honor to our flag, or something along that line. Mm -hmm. And we have people that they stand up and they say, you know, and somebody inevitably wants to say, uncover. Okay, I understand that thinking because that's what we did when we were in the military. You uncovered. But what if you're what if you're talking to somebody whose faith is such that they remain covered to pray, or they cover up to pray? Are they out of order? No. I noticed Mike never asks anybody to uncover. Please stand with me. You know. Please stand with me and let's pray. That's fine. And I mean, let's face it. we got plenty of folks that don't stand, but I don't believe that their prayer is no less heard to you. So the point here is, does the, does the manner in which we pray, should we have a prescribed prayer? Not really. I, I like the way Mike prays. As I said, I usually, I usually pray, um, what is it? Eternal God, please be merciful to us and bless us, cause your face to shine upon us and make your way known upon the earth, and your saving strength among all people, and so on. And it's right out of the ritual, and that's fine. Pray as you feel led, but remember that you, as a chaplain, are leading the prayer. And if you lead the prayer in such a way that you 
turn somebody off, turn somebody away, you've done a disservice. You've treated them not with respect and dignity, but with disrespect. Now, you can send your complaints to um, James Fuller Jr., that's me, DAV Craddock, Chapter 41, we're 41 getting it done. I'm part of the DAV of, of Virginia, Department of Virginia. Our address is there. My phone, uh, the office phone number is there. I've got my email. It's very, very simple. Charles at charlesfuller.com. And um, I, I have two Twitter accounts, Salty Chaplin, because yes, sometimes I am salty. And Bold for Christ, because I am. So uh, with that, I'm going to give this back over to Mike. Sorry it took longer than 10 minutes, but I had to elaborate a few times. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now the hard stuff begins. All right. A lot of things were said, and they're right on point. And I can't probably convey this enough the direction we have to go to. But just because he talked about this doesn't mean you deny your faith when you do this. He made a very good point, and that is you are a chaplain of all if you are elected or appointed in the Disabled American Veterans. You will not deny your faith, you know, from, from my faith perspective. There's people who say, well, you're praying in the name of Jesus Christ. The prayer don't count. Let me put it in some terms that hopefully you'll understand. And, and again, I apologize if you're offended, but guys, i got to get you to see the DAV way. Why? You're a DAV chaplain. And then once you take the DAV robe off, go back to your faith. And that is, <coughs> you are in charge of every faith that is in your organization. Let me give you an example. I went to a uh, department convention, and... Uh, they basically conducted a church service. And I noticed some individuals, some important individuals, were not present. So I went to talk to them. And I found out that they were Muslim. Veterans who were Muslims in this particular department. And I sat down with them and I said, so tell me, what's, what's going on? He says, did you go to the memorial service? I said, yes. Yeah. what a memorial service? It was a worship service for Christianity. I said, yes, it was. He goes, well, I'm not a Christian. I said, I see. And I immediately understood. So in this particular department, the chaplain was not mature or wise enough. Maybe they were mature, they weren't wise enough to figure out that, hey, look, you've got some other religions in your group. If you're in, in, in seminary, my major was world cults and religions. Did you know that Hindus have 400 and some odd million different gods? Okay. Did you know that... Uh, Buddha was a Hindu, and he disagreed with some of the teachings of Hinduism and then went off on his own direction. Okay? And none of those... And that, if that's what people want to believe, you have to encompass it. It doesn't mean you have to believe it. It just means that you have to do your services, your memorial services, to be all-encompassing. Now, I'm going to stop talking, and I know you all have some questions, but you're looking at me like... Well, if I had Superman laser beams, do cut cut half. Huh? <laughs> but I want to open up the floor for discussion, and I want you to air out any issues that you may have with what you've just heard. But I will not deviate from the DAV's mission as their chaplain, and as long as I'm national chaplain, I can't do otherwise. Oh, and before we open up for discussion here, remember this. In the official capacity of the DAV, think of it as just a formality. Because of my religion, my religion teaches me that if I want to pray, go to my closet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my religion teaches me that the religious leaders of the particular, a particular individual that I believe in would publicly pray in the open so they get the praises of men. That's what it teaches me. And Jesus said, don't do that. He says, go to the closet and pray if you want to pray. So we're not out here to showboat. There's another thing I have a problem with. In our departments and chapters, when the chaplain is called up to pray, 
He feels like he's been neglected the whole time. He feels like now is his time to pontificate. <laughs> so that's where I want to get a slingshot with some BBs and start hitting them, you know, and make them, you know, hey, keep it short and sweet. That's why I keep my prayer short and sweet. Because it isn't about me. It's about conducting business to help veterans. Oh, by the way, if your faith is similar to mine or any faith, to include Muslim, by the way, they do believe help one another. Now let's get to the business of helping one another. If you really want to witness what you believe, we do the DAV mission. Because it's parallel with a couple of faiths. Get out there and start helping people. That's what we do. We do it very well. And I see a parallel there. But when I'm wearing the gun, when I'm in the hat of the DAV, wearing the stove, then I must adhere to the non-secretarian portion because if we actually practice that outside of the DAV, I wonder how many people we could get to come and listen to what we believe because we're carrying that. Now, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to turn this floor over to you guys. Yes, sir. Okay, so, so what's your question? Oh, uh, Charles, I want you to come up here, sir. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to make sure Crosshair's on his chest, too. I thought it was, I was uh, safe. You're, you're not done. But, well, but we'll, we'll, start, we'll start on the good side. Uh, yes. I'm listening to Don't Know Me. I'm Joe Pinnell, Commander of Thank the Yard. And uh, let me start off by uh, putting it right out there. I'm not a Christian, and so I very much appreciate the DAV's stance of following our Constitution yes. to not set a religion for the organization. Thanks, sir. Now, Charles made one point that's really been the way that I've led my life, and it definitely needs underscoring. Mm -hmm. And his point was asking people about what they believe. And I found for me that's the best is, you know, I do follow kind of more of an agnostic group. I kind of waver around like the Jewish, Buddhist, a lot of the everybody's part of something bigger and we all affect each other. Well, if you want to beat me up afterwards, I'll be <laughs> No, no, no. I, I grew up in a Baptist church, so I know where you're coming from. Yeah, I'm so sorry. And so, uh, so I just wanted to sort of restoring that. What I found is most effective for me is exactly what you're saying is that. If I go in and ask other people their beliefs, I've learned and grown through time mm -hmm. and build uh, rapport with people at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Well, well said. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, at the beginning, you said, I'm going to give you my number because my information is not here. And then you That's went right. down a path and then you went down another path. That's, That's right. right. I did all kinds of stuff. Can you get your name? Yeah. I'm an OCD and I love chasing butterflies. Perfect. Excellent. All right, for those of you who want my personal number where you can text me and contact me at any time. If you want, I can put it up there. Put it up there. All right. It'll save me some, save me some time. It'll save me some time. You just want your um, cellular number up there? Yeah. So, all right. I used to have a flair for all the little transitions and things. All right, give me a second and I'll, um, I'll put it up there. Go on to another question. Who else has another question or doesn't understand? Yes, sir. If you're on a hospital visit, mm -hmm. and uh, usually I'm at a VA hospital, mm -hmm. but we also have a nursing home nearby mm -hmm. where a lot of veterans are. Um, and someone says, will you pray with mm -hmm. me? Do you pray with them? Or should you say to them, um, my prayers are going to be Christian prayers? Or, I mean, how do you handle that? I'm glad you asked that question. That's a very good question. And I have to deal with it quite often in uh, my line of work is in hospitals and nursing homes and hospice and the things that I also inside the field ministry. When someone asks you to pray for them, they're probably already aware of what you believe. Mm -hmm. Pray your prayers. Pray from your faith perspective. That's They've opened up the door for you to discuss what you pray. They've opened up that door. Okay? But don't do it without their permission. Michael, I just realized my wife is using my phone. And oh, your number is in it. But. Okay, uh, that would be 555 FL7067. Oh, no. uh, yes, sir. Yeah, right. 587. And 6440. 6440. My job as your national chaplain is to walk you through the tough things. That you don't understand. Be there. He says he's going he's to bring it up on a bigger screen. He put it in presentation format. He'll get it there. 706 587 6440. We'll have it up here in just a minute, guys. So you can take a picture of it. And good. All right. So you had your hand up first, sir. Georgia. What's that, sir? There must be a newer virtual book. 
because of the prayers. You are correct, sir. There is no newer ritual book. It's the same ritual book. But I will tell you what Ed Hartman told me when I had these situations. The ritual book that DAV publishes and still puts out there is a guide. That's all it is. It's just a guide. I would use the ritual book if I was a brand new elected or appointed chaplain and I didn't know what to pray, how to pray. I'd use the prayers in there. And you heard Charles talk about how he kind of adjusts those prayers. Well, when you've been doing this long enough, or been in ministry long enough, you can adjust and have no issues. But I would use the ritual book for someone who just absolutely doesn't know what to pray. Okay? And you can modify those prayers, but it's just a guidebook. You can go out on the internet and find all kinds of prayers out there. Prayer before business meetings. Prayer after business meetings. And you can use those prayers as long as they're not secretary. Okay? Well, and I will tell you that DAV had one at one time, and I've got copies of those, but I can't put them out there because they are heavily saturated from one faith perspective. And that's not fair to the other individuals and veterans who have served and our different beliefs. Whether I believe with them or not, it doesn't matter. I'm the chaplain of all. But Michael, are you saying that you don't have to follow the ritual? <laughs> I am. Don't we have to set our buildings up? I'm glad you asked that, Charles. <laughs> In your ritual book, how does it tell you to set up your meeting? Anybody remember? In a square. Does anybody set up their meetings at the chapter in the square? Negative. Where you've got the commander on one end and the senior vice on the other, just like the ritual book points out. No. So then you're not following the ritual book then, are you? <coughs> Boy, that's interesting. This is <coughs> so I know no one that sets up their meeting as in course with the ritual book, so it's just a guy. It's a guy. If you know nothing about the DAV, then set your chapter meetings up in a square as the ritual book plays out it, until you... But most of us have a head table with all the officers sitting at that, right? With the right. roving and all that. That's how we want to do it. So we can't complain about, well, if you don't use the prayers of virtual book, then uh, you're not doing it right. Well, then set your meetings up in the square. It's like, um, what am I looking for? It's like uh, you can't pick and choose what you want to use out of the Constitution and bylaws when it benefits you. Wait a minute, you're talking about people. People of faith. Darn it, Charles. That's it. Sit down and ask a tough question. We do. We do kind of pick and choose sometimes. That's exactly what we do in this chapel. Oh. We can be prejudiced based on our faith presence when we're dealing with other faiths within us. We cannot do that. Okay. Um, there was a. Right here, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I'll get you off soon. Been a chaplain for two months. Yes, sir. Two meetings. And uh, the commander, apparently, we need someone to fill in the ask me. And I could not say no. Yes, sure. up, that's, that's a void someone used to go. Yes, that's yes, right. Mm -hmm. Logic on All right. Now here's my question. You had me a plastic uh, insert with uh, a sheet that said opening prayer, closing prayer. Uh, he handed you that. I'm sorry? He handed you that. He handed you that. Okay. So uh, I've complied. Okay. Now, I may have violated the code, and here's where I need your help on. Okay. Um, I, I try to keep it down sectarial, but one of the things I reminded the membership of was, was hey folks, look, remember, we are a brother's keeper. That's correct. There's, there's no need to debate that. That's right. uh, if someone needs help, spiritual, psychological, health-wise, that's, <coughs> that's what the membership does for fellow veterans. Is that the in line? No, it's not. It's mm -hmm. exactly in line with what uh, our Constitution follows and how we should be treating one another in uh, in, in camaraderie. And then as a follow-up question, okay. then, if I hear you correctly, then it wouldn't be kosher to cite scripture from the Bible. Did you just use a Jewish word? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so we're, gonna be, we're gonna be picking and choosing our own religion. Well, well, you can't be using words like kosher or kosher, kosher law. But you're supposed to be open minded. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. And see, now you get my point. Yeah. So so what's the answer to that question? No, never mind. Oh, I didn't did, did you want to do it? No, <laughs> Say, please don't call somebody who should have. But anyway. <laughs> uh, right, right. The answer to that question, repeat one more time because I just changed the Can you cite like scripture? Like can you, John can, can you, Right. I would stay, if we're non secretarian, stay from a religious references. Well, that's what I would do. Now, this is what chaplains do in the department and in the chapter. And that is, you are the bridge to inform the commander look, this is who we are. And guys, when you go back to your 
chapters, units, departments, you are going to have a fight on your hands because there are folks. I live in the Bible Belt. Here's another important thing that you need to be aware of. Know your members. Know your members. If it's a Christian environment, feel free to do what you want to do. If it's a Muslim environment, feel free to do what you need to do. If it's a mixture, then be non sectarian I don't have a problem offending people as long as, and, and I don't say that in tongue-in-cheek, I don't, because I don't purposely offend anybody. But if you're wrong, I'm going to offend you. I'm going to correct you in other words. Because you represent, there's one thing from my faith perspective, if you say you represent God, and then you're out there and you're treating people like mess, I've got a problem with you. Now, if we say we're DAB chaplains, and we're now prejudiced against various faiths or sexual lifestyles, let's talk about the LGBT. They're in our, they're in our, in our group. Did they serve honorably? Yes. yes. That's the only requirement. You are the chaplain of them too, and you will love them unconditionally as well. We don't want to get religious on them. It doesn't matter if you dis, uh, disagree with them. That's not your place. Your place is to be all-encompassing. And what did I say at the beginning of the seminar? <coughs> care. Well, I need you to care. I don't need you to be seminary trained. I just need you to care. All right. Another question up here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Most of the time, I'm the only Jewish personnel in every place we go. I like, especially in our state, when the chaplain gets up there and he looks at me and says, Shalom, when he starts everything else. And the first time he did that, he came over to me and said, Are you Jewish? And I said, Born and raised. Yeah. In my chapter in Colorado, our, we do have a chaplain there who's praying. And then he came over to me afterwards and said, I'm really sorry because I said, In Jesus Christ, Amen. You know, he said, I'm so sorry. I said, You know what? It's not offending me because you're not praying just to me, you're praying for everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you've accepted that, and then yeah. you guys worked out a system. And that's what camaraderie <coughs> and togetherness is all about, working out systems. But, he, but he's got to be careful what he prays. Now, Charles, uh, even though I'm answering this question, if you've got to follow up or you want to add some more, by all means, please do so, sir. Okay. I have a question for Charles. Again. Oh, yeah, please. sorry. <clears throat> okay, non-denominational, non-secretary. Secretary, yeah, it's all right. Secretary. 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 And submitted it to Ed Hartman, and he said, no, uh, because we're not secretary, and I can't specifically make a prayer book, because the prayers of a Muslim is not the same as a Christian. And sometimes the Shema, from a Jewish perspective, is not the same kind of prayer from a Muslim perspective. So I was shot down for that reason, because we're the non-secretary calls in our thing. So yeah, I did create one. It was about 15 pages. And I even created a chaplain handbook to update the one we the update the one we had, and that was all shot down. So it wasn't due to lack of trying. I tried to make it non-secretary as possible. I mean, I really, truly did. But, but what was pointed out to me, which is why uh, we're having these seminars about this, is because what Ed Hartman wanted to make sure that I understood as a national chaplain was that we can't just pray from a particular faith perspective because we are the chaplain. So, so therefore, the publications that I submitted were not moving forward, that sort of thing. So, if I, if, if, if I, I could. I, 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 well, sir, if you'll give if, us a moment, let him finish. If I, then you're next. My, my suggestion to any new chaplain is get to know other chaplains. There's nothing saying that you can't share ideas and prayers and such. Um, at every conference or convention, I'm asked to give a blessing for the food before we before we pray, before we eat. And so what I typically do, because I was, well, I am an Eagle Scout, but I was in Boy Scouts, I pray the Philmont Grace, which is uh, for food, for raiment, for life, for opportunity, for friendship and fellowship, we thank the O Lord. That's it. And 
it's neutral. It gives, it, it covers pretty much everybody. Even those who may not believe as I do aren't going to be terribly offended by it. But then again, I'm, I've got a thick enough skin, so if, if they're offended, they can come talk to me. It's all right. It's the uh, Belmont Grace. I can I can get it to you later. Okay. Well, let me let me get one question then. Okay. Uh, question at the beginning of our meetings, mm -hmm. we place the Bible. I know. Okay. I know. And should we place the Quran there and then all of the then if we're going to be non sectarian then how many of you Bible, well, you bring up a very good point. How many of you attended my uh, memorial service this morning? Did I have a Bible down there? No. Did I have a Quran? No. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. You can see, but there wasn't one down there. So for non sectarian why are we displaying a particular faith document in our memorial services? Yeah. My point. Okay. Or if you're going to display, then you display every faith document. You're fair to everyone. You're the chaplain for everyone. And again, not displaying the Bible doesn't mean you're anti-American or anti-God. It means you're being considerate of your comrades who do not believe the way you do. And yes, you are absolutely correct. And I've been at many department and chapter memorial services where we're going to, will the chaplain come forward and open the Bible and give us a prayer? And again, it all comes down to this. You have to know who your members are. What's their faith belief? Now, you don't have to go out there and what do you believe? What do you believe? What do you believe? That's, that's not necessary, okay? What's necessary is be all encompassing by these neutral prayers and just think of it as a formality so you don't get your head wrapped up in, oh my God, I'm going to hell because I'm not praying in a certain way. We don't, no, you're not. Okay, yes, ma'am. And, uh, I'm sorry, before we go there, sir, we'll answer your question. You did ask my question. We never went on a point about uncovered. Please. Uh, every month we have training, okay? The fourth Saturday, my, I'm from the great state of Alabama. Okay. 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 Uh, and so last month our training was about wearing of the hip. Okay. Right. Okay. And then in that presentation, our <coughs> trainer was teaching us when we pray, remove the hip. Mm -hmm. right. I just saw your demonstration right. there about mm -hmm. Uh, not removing the, the right. head here for some religion. Right. Okay. So that is kind of contradictory to what the training was. Yeah, right. Uh, versus Which is what why I just heard. Right. Which is why we're having this seminar so you can go back and teach what right looks like. And now here's the deal. Oh, no, no, please. No. You're going to have some folks. I, I went to one meeting in, in the northern part of Virginia, and after the meeting, this man at the good of the order, uh, he stood up and said, This is my cover. There are many like it. Those of you who are Marines know this, um, and so on. His point was that everyone should be covered. Oh, uh, no, not really, not necessary. I mean, it's nice. I, I was happy when I got my white hat, I'll be honest, you know. Thought, okay, great, I got a, uh, good guys wear white hats, right? So, but, um, but the thing with that is, it's not about the hat you wear. It's not about the, it, it's not about the formality. I mean, I like the I like the the idea that you take your cover off and you lay it across your your left shoulder, and in do, so doing, your hand is over your heart. And if that floats your boat, you do that. But don't insist that everyone does that. So let me reemphasize that point. Let the members make their own personal decision what they want to do with their headgear. Because if you were at the memorial service, I never said headgear. It was up to the member whether or not they wanted to wear headgear. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, ma'am, you were next. I, I apologize. Um, I find the best thing to know and not do is to listen and observe. If you just stay back and like listen and observe, you can find out so much about people. Yeah. I've been able to pray what people need it and how they pray, if they weren't from me. And they appreciate it so very much. And do enjoy being a chaplain. And uh, thank you for sharing that information, and you're absolutely right on point. Don't we sometimes tend to do a lot more talking than we do listening? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you about proper communication. Some of you may have heard this story. I was a young, brand new, uh, married individual. I was a drill sergeant in the United States Army Infantry. 
and my wife was a Fox television promotion manager. So Dover wants to communicate with his wife. So we're driving down the interstate, and I'm just 15 minutes. I'm giving her the what for and talking about, and everything I'm talking about is Army acronyms. <laughs> When I get done pontificating, Dover's thumping his chest and, ah, I've communicated with my wife. Now, my wife turns the tables on me, and she's a promotions manager at Fox uh, Television Station, and she starts talking to me in television lingo. <laughs> and after she gets done, I look over, and I say, what did you just say? And she's driving. And we're down this, and she takes this finger. I know it very well. 28 years, I know this finger. And she points at it, and goes, exactly, Dover. And she puts her hands on the steering wheel, we're still in. I realized from that moment forward, I was not properly communicating. I was not listening. And as chaplains, you're going to find that you don't have to give answers to every problem. They just want someone to talk to. And all you have to do is listen. You don't have to be a subject matter expert in everything. What you need to know is who is the subject matter expert, what the resources of the DAV is, and I don't have a problem stepping outside the DAV realm to go to local ministries to get help to a veteran. Because there are chapters out there that don't have the finances to help a veteran. But there are ministries on the street you can go to, and it's okay to use them. As a matter of fact, my suggestion is get yourself a little book, go back to your community, and write down all the ministries that you have. That way, if your chapter is not financially strong to assist, you can go out and know who to contact, and you have to develop those relationships. Okay. Uh, sir, you were next. Well, first of all, in part of all, being a good listener, I have experience in both years, so I could be a good listener. <coughs> but my son is a Lutheran pastor mm -hmm. on the East Coast, which is predominantly Catholic. Mm -hmm. So he's been in on his own prayer. But when I was elected, I, I've been the, 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 the Chapter, chapter a couple of times, but I was just recently elected to the state chapter. And so I called them up after I paid for seven years of schooling. I said, hey, I want you to write me some prayers. And he said, I'm not going to write no prayers for you. He said, you are prayers from the heart. He said, that's, that's the best way to do it. Yeah. So I write all my own prayers. Yeah. Now, to piggyback on that statement, <clears throat> you see me when I come up to the podium, I pull a prayer out on a sheet of paper. Those prayers come from the heart. Because I set hours, and I write out what I'm thinking. Then I set it off to the side for about 24 hours. And I go, and I've learned this as a doctor right from the United States Army Infantry School. And I go back and say, is that what I really want to say? But I give my eyes a break. And then I bring the prayer back and I say, is this what I want to say? Is this relevant to the situation? And then I cross out, rework. And you don't have one standard prayer that's going to fit all the situations. It's just not going to happen. And so that is a very good uh, piece of advice. Say it from your heart. And even if you stumble over the words, people know it's from the heart. Guys, when I'm out there and I do the fist bump and I hug you and or the chest bump or I trip you up or whatever it is that we're doing out there, do you believe I'm genuine? Okay? Because if you don't believe I'm genuine, then why do people elected me? <laughs> no one else. Okay? Touche. <laughs> 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 oh, Touche. Hey, but you know what? Don't get offended. <laughs> you will stay after class. <laughs> my, my point is, when I tell you to care, be genuine in your care. You don't have to be articulate. And you don't have to be a great orator. You just, when people see the genuinality of who you are, you're going to be golden. All right? Yes, sir. Uh, I have a question I've asked several times. Okay. And I've got the same answer okay. until the last two or three years. All right. But for the last 18 years, I've served as a lay chaplain. Okay. For the DAV, I've been a uh, uh, district chaplain and now department chaplain on my third <coughs> So the question is, what we're discussing today makes me think that having a cross on my cover is going to be offensive and we should take them off or should we leave them off? Okay, this is where you have to go back chaplain and you have to know your people. If you've got yeah. anyone else other than the Christian faith as members, 
then it's not wise to have a symbol of your faith displayed on the D80 cap when we just said that it is non-secretarian. And I see a lot of crosses on that, and there's nothing wrong with them up there if you know your people. Okay? You've got to know your people. I mean, what good is a chaplain if, you know, you're just out there plowing through life and you're not looking left and right and you're not taking those steps or stops once in a while to discuss stuff with folks to get, as this young lady said right here, listening and communicating, getting to know them. What good is that if you're not going to do it? And then you've got the cross on there or maybe the, the moon and the crescent or the crescent and the star or the Hindu Buddha God. And, and, and guess what? We kind of violated then our constitutional bylaws, right? All right. Who's next? This guy over here. Uh, I'm well, sorry. I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. No, no, I'm glad. Yeah, help, help me out here. Okay. I'm learning that this, that, like this gentleman here, I've been a chaplain since May, and I grew up in a Christian faith, so what's hard for me is to change how I pray. Mm -hmm. Okay? The, <coughs> So when you end your prayer, you just say amen. Is that it? Or that's a Jewish prayer? <coughs> no, no, not necessarily. Who was that on the morning service? How do I end my prayer? Amen. 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 Now, amen is Christian, uh, uh, Jewish in, in nature because I don't think in uh, Islam they end their prayers in amen. So there's that. Oh, it just means let it be, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. 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 So, so, let it be so. Let it be so. But amen, so be it. Yep, so be it. Or, how about just change it, change the religious term and just say at the end of your prayer, so be it. Because that's what amen means. But so be it. amen means the same thing in every language. It's, it's not pronounced the same way. Amen, amen, different, different ways. The fact is, amen means the same thing. Let it be so. Yeah. And, Typically, that's not going to be offensive to anyone. And if they and if they are offended, they'll come tell you about it. Now, this if, this is before I became chaplain. It's always been they walk in, they open the Bible, and they start their meeting, mm -hmm. and then you know they pray. Mm -hmm. and now I pray, but I mean, it's like when well, you brought up the point about the Bible, I mean that's what I'm thinking about too. Is like how do I get them? Probably just leave it alone until somebody maybe you can lay flat it or actually you bring up it's a great question. The Bible. Does it belong in the in the um, in the hall in the meeting as part of as part of the meeting? Well, I have news for you. Some will say yes and some will say no. I would almost guarantee that if you go back to your chapter or to your department and tell them, hey, guess what? We're not going to put the Bible out anymore. They're going to want to skin you alive. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the fact of the matter is this. We have a president every four years sworn in on a sacred text. I don't think that I've seen anyone sworn in on anything other than a Bible. Um, it, is not, it is not that we want people or that we expect people to deny faith. It's just like the whole LGBT thing. You don't have to condone, but you don't get to condemn. You know, and the, the thing with that is, you know, our our chapter we have the we have the Bible on the table. It's open before the service before the service. Wow. Before <laughs> Jesus. No. There you go. <laughs> but before before we get started, it's already open, right. and that's so that there's it's not part of a ceremony, but it's there, it's done. Um, at the department, honestly, there have been some times when I've been nervous about what I was doing, and somebody else had to come up and open it. You know, okay, chat, well, I got this. But the fact is, it's it's there um, in our constitution and bylaws in the uh, in the in the department. It. it specifies that I'm supposed to be responsible for the Bible. Now, again, it's up to you and your membership. If you, if your membership says, yeah, fine, let's can the Bible, let's not have any religious texts up here, so be it. You have to abide that. If they don't, if they want that, I mean, isn't the power of the body, I mean, the power in the DAV with the body? So, again, we, we have to remember, 
We're not, it's having a Bible out is not sectarian in and of itself. That's, that's the point. Um, it is there probably for tradition more than anything is. But there again, leave it out one time and let's see what, see how your members respond. Right. Um, yes, sir. And then we'll, and then we'll go back to you, sir. Back. Me or no, no. <laughs> okay. Um, the duties of the chaplain. Yep. Okay. Is that to read the obituaries every morning to see who has passed away and then go? <laughs> okay. Is that going to all the hospitals around to see if you can find members? Oh, no. And the thing is, is that um, go and visit the people who are members. And you have no idea who they are, but you just. I just pick anybody who's over 80 because I know that they're probably more need than someone who's under uh, 80. Oh, so and you're discriminating. Discriminating. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> because I got more people who's over 80 right now than it's under 80. Okay. And these guys, you go and visit them and they have been abandoned by their families or their church or synagogue or whatever. And they really need a visitor to come in and just talk to. One gentleman said, it's great. You're the first male voice I talked to face to face in three years. Wow. Well, we get your auxiliary involved in that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, while we're talking about a hospital visit, may I? Yeah, please. Um, if you're going to visit someone in the hospital, remember they're not there for conversation. They're there for convalescence. Yes. You don't need to spend all day with them. And I'm not saying be stingy with your time. We as chaplains, if you're, if you're, well, for lack of a better word, called to be a chaplain, you're already giving up your time. That's fine. That's what we do. But don't overwhelm somebody. Oftentimes when I go in to visit someone, I will wear a jacket. Even if it's 100 degrees outside, I'll have a jacket, a suit coat or something like that. And I don't wear suits as much as I used to, but I wear a something over so that when I walk into the room, I can take it off and set it down. Spend 10, 15 minutes with them, offer them prayer, and put my coat on. The reason I do that is because psychologically, taking off your coat and putting it back on creates the image that you have spent a good bit of time with. I know it sounds, it sounds bad, but it works because they may want you to stay for an hour. That's not really what's best for them. Right. They're there, as I said, to convalesce, not to converse. So in other words, what you're saying is you need to be sensitive to their needs. Yeah. Sometimes, look guys, I'm not, I am by all means not good, I'm just saved. And I, by all means, I am not perfect. And let me tell you something, early in my ministry career, I can't tell you how many souls I destroyed by being religious. And I'd browbeat them over the head with the Bible said, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. And I was not demonstrating what the Bible teaches about God's love. Now, it took me a while to learn that. I hope you don't have to wait as long as I did to get the lesson, which is why we're imparting this to you. But the reality of it is, it's the same with nursing homes. It's the same with hospitals, hospice. Be sensitive to your surroundings. You don't need to go in there and start preaching the, the Quran or the Bible or Hindu prayer. Look, you know, I, I this is very close to home to me. Why? My son was raised in a, in a Christian home his whole life. He goes off to college, comes back, and he's got Hindu gods tattooed all over his legs. And, and then he curses his mother and I, telling him that, well, there are many ways to get to God. Well, I love my son. I'm not going to diss him. And he's my son. I'm going to love them unconditionally, which is the same kind of attitude we should have towards others, regardless of what they got tattooed on them or what they believe, whatever the case may be. We're chaplains. I can't drive this home enough. We are chaplains, and this is our calling. This is your calling. And we're all on the same sheet of music. And Charles, you made a very good point about the Bible. Yeah, you're going to get skinned alive. Now, so I don't probably, we've got about 10 minutes, guys, so I've got to go, but the gentleman back here, I'm not the ball ball. Yeah, you. Focus on more sectarian, but uh, then you say get to know the members of the group. So that's kind of conflict to me. So, uh, I'm, I'm saying in Jesus' name, as I said, all the children, all God's children say amen. So, all right, what if you're Hindu and you say in Jesus' name? They don't believe in Jesus. 
Right. And even Muslims believe that Jesus was a prophet, wasn't the Son of God. Right. Right. And then Hinduism believes that you can become God by turning inward and creating, you know, dissipating the, the surrounding environment by chanting and a few other things. So, so you are actually being discriminatory when you say, in Jesus' name and all the children of God said, that's why you need to know your people. Right. And so it, it kind of, it's, it's the same rule of thumb, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you've got to know what it is that you're, you're representing. Now I'm going to talk to the chaplain way back at our auxiliary national chaplain. How you doing there? Hello. 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 One of the other things to remember is also, because it just, it was brought back to me on the auxiliary side, is remember also in our written communication, we're, we're being really great, we're sending out wonderful cards to someone that might be sick or distressed, or to the family that passed away. Remember to extend the non-sectarian there. Because, for instance, okay, and I'm just picking a situation, perhaps you got those free cards and you're astonished, Catholic, that's fine. I have no problem with that. But if you send them to someone who perhaps might have another faith, um, who might be Protestant or Jewish or what have you, sometimes your well wishes are very lost on the message of your card. It might be a free card. You might have had the greatest intentions in the world. But try to look at the cards before you send them and make sure that they also are non-sectarian because your message of love or thoughtfulness, sometimes if you don't send it in a non-sectarian way, it becomes a, a message of lack of thought. Thank you, Chaplain. So why don't we have cards uh, specifically made for DAB? We do, we do, we do. I can't find them. They're not in the yes. catalog. We go to the store. They're there. Well, they are taking those. Oh, are they? We do have cards. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go on this side over here. Yes. Um, Will, uh, Chapter 5, New Mexico. I'm a new <coughs> chaplain as well. I, my, the question I have is I need either guidance or something on when you go to the hospital. If you were brought up not to bother others, and my first time was Veterans Day. I had some, I couldn't visit because of the Mars uh, infection in our hospital. But others, they're resting and I didn't want to go in and disturb them. But I had coupon books that would help them. So I gave it to the nurse rather. How, how do you get past the I know they're there to heal, and I don't want to disturb them, but I want to at least go in and say hi, you know. Yes. How very do you do good. that? That's a very good question. So here's my guidance for you. I would not leave anything if a, if a veteran that you're visiting is sleeping, and there's no one else in that office, don't leave literature with the medical professionals. If there's family there, I wouldn't even leave the uh, uh, material with the family. But what I would do if the veteran is, <coughs> is sleeping, and what I do is I go in and say, how are you all doing? What can I do to help you? Does anybody need some, some water? Does someone need me to go get them some food? How long have you been up here? That's what I'll do for the family members who are sitting there by the side of the bed. I don't need to address the veteran. Because by addressing the spouse or the family members that are there with the veteran, what have I just done? I have just opened the door in rows to be able to assist that veteran when he comes to, or to make contact with the spouse. So if the veteran passes away, now we can talk to the IC or whatever the special circumstances are. Go in as a servant. You're there to serve. So, so when you said, um, you know, you were taught not to disturb anybody, that's kind of a oxymoron for a chaplain. We, I don't, I don't want to, you know, say to go and purposely disturb people, but we are people people. We are people persons, and that's what chaplains do. But we, it's how we approach someone, and it's how we uh, uh, approach the uh, condition of someone determines whether or not we can take specific paths. Yes, ma'am. All right, chaplain, tell us what you got. You got a, you got a good, now, by the way, 
This is Orly Nicodemus. She is the national chaplain for the auxiliary, but she's also a registered nurse with the no, VA system. Licensed practical nurse. Practical nurse. And guess what? How long have you been working in the hospital? In two weeks, it will be 35 years. Okay. Wow. So you probably have a lot of good examples. So, so the yes. answer is please don't wake the patient up. Yes. <laughs> please. They yeah. may not have slept for, for, you know, that may be the first time they've gone to sleep in three days. That's okay. Yeah. So don't wake them. But it only takes about five minutes to, to put just a little business size card thinking of you today, you know, chaplain so and so and your contact information. You know, or get well quick, we're thinking of you on a little piece of paper, staple it to that little thing and leave it right on the bedside table. You know, or if it's a if it's a precaution room, you can they usually have a little thing that you can clip it on the outside of the room, and then the nurse will take it in on the next time. But chasing around the nurses is not a good plan, or giving them stuff to do because they've got too many things in their hands already. That's correct. Um, but again, if you take your coupon book and just take a minute, and whether you want to write it on the outside cover and handwriting a personal message, or whether you just want to do something on the computer and print it off. You know, thinking of you today, get well quick, you know, we're here if you need us, your name. But just something that's in writing so that they can contact you, but that way you're not waking them up, because please don't wake them up. No. <laughs> now you've just heard from a subject matter expert. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take two more questions, guys. Uh, would you do me a favor? I'm going to put, put my email up there. Yes, sir. Far. If I didn't, don't get to your question right now, because we have another, I've got to go anyway. Uh, without Charles, uh, I understood that you have to come to the same place, but I can I can come late. Okay, what I've got to do is in about five minutes I've got to leave and go to the CNA because I've got to present myself and prove that I am who I am. Uh, <laughs> so it is a formality. I've got to do what I got to do. But if I don't get to your question today, I'm going to put my email address up here, which is M P Dover six two M P Dover six two at gmail.com. Write your question. And I will get back with you today. All right, uh, right here, sir. Uh, mine is not a question. Okay. More of the, uh, anyway, I've it heard should... uh, what is there we go. Term, uh, the term as a ritual book and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, rules and bylaws. And so the question would be, uh, how do we want to get that, or could you bring that for the next year to have to, to give to some of the new chapters? Are you talking about the ritual book? Yeah, cool. yeah, he's talking about, he's heard, well, we've been here the chaplain's ritual book and the Constitution of Bylaws. Constitution of Bylaws can be easily gotten at any time. The chaplain handbook, for just, just to lay it to rest, does not exist. The chaplain handbook does not exist because I can't get the updates produced because of the non-secretarian stance. So there, even though I have an old one from previous in the past, I can't even hand that out from the position I hold right now. So the bottom line is, guys, may I make a suggestion? Go to a bookstore, Christian uh, Bible bookstore or a religious bookstore. You can even go to Barnes and Noble, which is not religious, and they got religious material in there. And they've got books on all kinds of stuff. How to conduct funerals. How to conduct marriages, how to pray. But you have to be, you know, conscious of what it is that you gotta go get, and you gotta know your people so you know what kind of appropriate prayers are necessary. With that said, I'm gonna leave with Charles, Charles gonna show up late. I'm gonna let him finish out the questioning. And by all means, guys, if you've got other places to be, that's fine. But I want to make sure before you leave here today that all your questions are answered and that you don't leave not understanding what the DAV's point of view is, all right? I love each and every one of you, and I'm thankful that you're here, and I know you're going to have a tough battle when you go back, because they're steeped in tradition. That's it. Steeped in tradition. And it's really hard to crack that nut. But be per, uh, persevere, and do the best you can at that. So with that, Charles, I'm going to turn it over. Right. Charles, thank you very much. I appreciate it, man.